this is a study that uh, uh, looks at indolent systemic mastocytosis patients. This is the result uh, from a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial of abapritinib administered to patients with indolent systemic mastocytosis. Now, before we talk about the trial, perhaps uh, it would be useful to give a little bit of background on systemic mastocytosis. Uh, so this is a clonal disorder of the hematopoietic stem cell uh, arising from a progenitor cell with a mutation in a gene called KIT. Um, and this uh, mutation is most often uh, D816V, a point mutation involving the tyrosine kinase domain of the molecule leading to constitutive activation of the KIT, which then leads to um, mast cell activation and proliferation that leads to systemic mastocytosis. Now, the majority of the patients with systemic mastocytosis is a subtype called indolent systemic mastocytosis, and about 15 to 20 percent would have so-called advanced uh, systemic mastocytosis. Uh, the patients with advanced varieties often have other uh, bone marrow and blood disorders, mainly myelodysplastic and myeloproliferative disorders, which might uh, progress to acute uh, leukemias and uh, have very poor prognosis. Um, in contrast, patients with indolent systemic mastocytosis have a comparable life expectancy, but uh, they, are, they suffer from symptoms of mast cell activation, including itching, uh, flushing, abdominal complaints like diarrhea. So they usually have a very poor quality of life. And um, they uh, also are on um, various symptomatic medications like antihistamines, but uh, they still have breakthrough symptoms. And uh, there is really no curative treatment uh, to target uh, this mutation that causes systemic mastocytosis. So there's an urgent need for new therapies in the field of mastocytosis targeting this particular mutation causing the disease. Now, avapritinib is a selective inhibitor of the kit d 816 v mutation that drives systemic mastocytosis. And so far, our approach to indolent variety of mastocytosis has been to use uh, anti-mediator type medications like H1H2 antihistamines, leukotriene blockers, um, partially because there were no good uh, selective medications to target this particular mutation. Now, this is the first uh, trial that uh, uh, tries to, um, that uses a medication that uh, specifically targets the, the, the molecule. And therefore, I think it's going to be uh, a paradigm changing treatment uh, as we move forward with the uh, experience um, uh, with this drug. Now, um, the trial has two phases. Uh, the first uh, a part is a dose escalation or a dose finding uh, part that enrolls uh, 39 patients uh, that either receive placebo or one of the three doses of evapridinib at 25, 50, and 100 milligrams. And really, it uh, looks at the safety and efficacy of the drug. And, uh, and the primary endpoint is to find the dose to use in the second part, which is the more expanded part of the study, uh, focusing more on, um, on efficacy. If you look at the patient population, uh, these patients, uh, majority of them had ECOG status of one. Um, uh, but about 21% also had ECOG2, uh, meaning that they cannot do any type of work because of the disability experienced uh, by these mass cell activation symptoms. Their uh, average uh, uh, tryptase level was 45, and tryptase is a surrogate marker of mass cell burden and disease burden. Uh, normal tryptase is around 5. So the average patient uh, had a trip days of 45 nanograms per milliliter uh, in this trial. And uh, the mast cell percentage uh, or the mast cell involvement was about 10%. 95% of these patients had this uh, particular KIT mutation, KIT D816V mutation. And all of these uh, bone marrow biopsies 
uh, were assessed by a central pathologist, Dr. Tracy George, who confirmed the diagnosis of mastocytosis. And uh, of course, all of these patients were on multiple symptomatic uh, H1H2 antihistamine type medications, proton pump inhibitors, uh, and some were on steroids and, and omeluzumab uh, to reduce the symptoms. Now, uh, when we first uh, look at the tolerability, which is shown in table two in our poster, uh, the, the drug was uh, well tolerated across all three doses, 25, 50, and 100 milligram dosing. And um, the most common side effects were nausea and dizziness. And if you look at the 25 milligram, which is the lowest dose tested in this trial, there were no grade three or higher side effects uh, with this uh, 25 milligram dosing. Um, when we look at 50 and 100 milligram dosing, there were some grade three side effects, mainly nausea, uh, headaches, and, and diarrhea, uh, but uh, nobody discontinued the drug because of the serious adverse events. So overall, the drug was very well tolerated. Now, when we look at the efficacy of the drug, uh, the drug was uh, effective in reducing the symptoms by an average of 30%. And the symptoms were assessed by the so-called uh, indolent systemic mastocytosis symptom assessment form, right, which the patient filled out on a daily basis. Um, and when we analyzed the data at week 16, we saw that the placebo patients had really no change in any of the symptoms, as opposed to the patients who are on evapritinib, uh, they experienced an average of 30% reduction of, of, uh, of symptoms. Now, if we break down that response according to the dosing that the patients received, 25 milligram dosing was as effective as 50 and 100 milligram dosing when analyzed at week 16. And uh, because of this, uh, the safety and the efficacy parameters that were examined in this trial, 25 milligram was chosen as the move forward dose for the part two or the more expanded phase of the trial, which has not started enrollment yet. Now, um, when we look at the surrogate markers of mast cell or the direct uh, markers of mast cell burden uh, by bone marrow biopsy or assessing the tryptase levels, we saw that these also parallel the symptom improvement uh, in these patients. The majority of the patients had uh, a reduction in their tryptase level by 50% or more, and again, all patients, almost all patients except for one, experienced reductions in bone marrow mast cell burden. And again, the majority experienced uh, reductions in the D816V allele burden uh, as compared to placebo. So overall, the drug was well tolerated. It was effective in reducing the symptoms and this efficacy was paralleled by objective burdens of mass cell reduction um, in this trial. So we are excited to uh, uh, start with the part two of the uh, trial and uh, look forward to the data on a more expanded uh, phase of this trial. And I uh, think that uh, this medication, again, for the first time, targeting the direct root cause of the disease, which is the kit mutation, as opposed to uh, putting the patients on symptomatic medications, which really does not do anything for the mutated neoplastic mast cell population, is really going to be a groundbreaking new therapy um, in the future, in my opinion.